In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at enterprise integration patterns with Apache Camel. This is a very important topic, and I'll say a few things about it. First of all, enterprise integration patterns is kind of like metaprogramming because what we're doing is we are connecting different programs together. This is a very emerging topic, one that I think we're, we're hearing a lot more about lately, and I think is a, a nice capstone for this course. So what are enterprise integration patterns? First of all, we have to think about integration. Different systems working together, different programming languages, different message formats. So we might have a mainframe program that generates a flat file, maybe a .NET program that speaks in web services, maybe a Java program that speaks in JSON, uh, maybe some batch programming. And how do we connect these things together? Well, today integration is a necessity. And I'm going to tell a couple stories from when I got out of college in 1997 and I started working. Uh, the, the, the architecture of IT was very different back then. Everybody was kind of used to this idea that, well, we submit everything and then a batch job runs tonight and then we'll get our answers tomorrow. That's simply not how things work now. Everybody expects real time. Think about interacting with uh, order online, pick up in store, click and collect. Uh, maybe you get your, uh, you reserve a flight and you get your, your flight ticket, your boarding pass on your mobile phone. You change your seat on your mobile phone and then you can immediately go to a kiosk and print it. This kind of integration is what's expected today. Uh, when I first started working at, back in the 90s, uh, my first job, I remember the relocations department was on the fifth floor and the real estate department was on the fourth floor. They both had two different databases that were identical. And when the reload department would finish something, they would print it, print it off, send it inner office mail uh, down to the uh, real estate department, and then the real estate department would open it up, type it into their database. So that's kind of old school integration. Uh, another one I remember is when I worked at a, at a bank, I left, I updated my address because I moved with, uh, I updated my address on my bank account, updated my employee address. And then about a year later, I got a letter from them in the mail that with my 401k payout, and it said, uh, we sent you a disbursement, but we sent it to your old address, and we did that two months ago, so now your rollover period has ended, and we had to deduct taxes and a penalty from it. Well, they sent it to my old address, even though I had changed my address with them twice. So naturally, I was a bit upset that they, I would have to change my address with them a third time, and because of their inefficiencies, I was now penalized with an early withdrawal from my 401k. So these are the kind of horror stories that we have in the past that we simply wouldn't put up with today. So integration is expected. No redundancy. Uh, none of the idea of three different addresses for one person who's an employee, a customer, and also has a 401k. Uh, no retype. We don't want to enter office mail things from the fourth floor to the fifth floor, vice versa. And a universal view of data. So uh, that's where I say you print your, you change your seat, you see it on the mobile phone, you see it on the kiosk. So why do we have to have these integration patterns? Well, we know that software has different formats both the syntax of XML versus JSON, but also think about this. What about the content? You might say, oh, okay, well, I form my JSON now, and maybe I wrote an Android app, and I've released it to a 1,000 people. Now, a year later, I, wanna, I, I make some changes to my app. I release an upgrade. This app communicates with a central server. Okay, if the JSON format changes because maybe I've added some new features, then how's, that, how's my server going to deal with JSON from both the old version and the new version, and maybe even a future version? Same with XML. Maybe you've added some more XML elements to a web service, but you still have clients on the old web service, and you're going to have clients on a new web service with a new format. This is where CAMEL and enterprise integration really shines, because CAMEL and enterprise integration can do routing of messages. But even more importantly, they can do transformation of messages. They can do filtering and redirection of messages. So maybe messages that are coming in one format get routed to one server. Messages in another format get routed to another server. Or maybe you take the old messages and you're able to enhance them after the fact by adding the XML 
elements that they're missing compared to the new format of message. So you can do these kind of inline transformations, which makes upgrading much easier. Okay, another thing we want to think about routing is point-to-point -point connections versus hub and spoke. Point-to-point -point means every time you add a new piece of software, you have to connect it to every established piece of software. Uh, naturally, that's you know expensive because your number of connections is the number of pieces of software that you add, and the more you add, you know it's kind of a it's kind of a big O equation. Hub and spoke means you take a proprietary format, maybe one you don't have control over because it's a vendor format. You take it through a translator with Camel, and you're able to standardize it, or as we'll say, put it in a canonical format, run it through a hub, and then that hub can direct it wherever it needs to go. Uh, so the idea is you just have this one gateway that's going from proprietary to canonical, and then on the way back out, from canonical to proprietary. So some terms that we have with enterprise integration. And the uh, camel.apache.org has a nice page that shows some symbols for each of these and, and some more descriptions. One is microservices. Maybe instead of writing a, a really big piece of software, and let's think again, something like a, an airline reservation system, you know, that's going to be expensive. Maybe instead of writing a big piece of software, you just write a little service that's maybe the upgrade service. So you say, okay, here are all the people on this flight. Here are their frequent flyer levels. I'm going to send this into this microservice. It's going to do some algorithm to figure out who gets upgraded or what seats need to be reassigned. It's going to give me that information back. So instead of building a huge piece of software, we follow a model that works honestly very well with Scrum, which is writing little pieces of software that we can connect together through integration. So that's what a microservice is. Message. Message means this is a piece of data that we're moving around. A JSON, XML, uh, flat file, whatever it would happen to be, even an email message. A message router is basically a map of where this message is going to go. Are we going to filter certain messages so that they go to a certain destination? Uh, here again, maybe we offer a free drink coupon to people who have achieved a certain uh, frequent flyer status. So we're going to filter messages to print or give away or maybe send the drink coupon only if you've flown 50,000 miles or greater. Splitter, uh, maybe certain people are entitled to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the stretch seating and other people are not, so we might split again and say, okay, 25,000 miles and greater, you, you get the option for stretch seating. Aggregator, we're going to take pieces of data and put them together. So whether you reserve directly on the airline's website or maybe through a travel agency or maybe you've got a package deal, we're going to take all of this information and we're going to see, okay, aggregate it all together and see who gets T TSA pre-check or something like that. Transformation, that's what I talked about earlier where I said you might have three different versions of software. And trust me, when you get into mobile development, it's quite possible you could have 10, 12 different versions of your software, 10, 12 different message types, message formats. Uh, again, maybe all XML or maybe all JSON, but the payload might differ. Even the XSD, the validation might differ. Pipes and filters is, uh, pipes repre represents a message and a filter would be a, kind of a, a routing mechanism. A point to point, Q. So you remember uh, several videos ago, we installed ActiveMQ when we saw how we could add items to a queue. So a queue means we typically have one producer, one person putting onto the queue, could be more, but typically we tend to think of one, and then one consumer, one person pulling off of the queue. That's a big topic with integration. These queues, because integration is integrating, for lack of a better word, or combining different pieces of software together, we have to have queues for guaranteed delivery so that one piece of software has the ability to produce a message that will be read by another piece of software. Now, a topic is a very similar concept, but that's more a publish-subscribe method uh, where you can say, okay, we may have one or more producers, but then we're going to have several consumers as well, and all consumers should get the message. All of these very common things in enterprise integration. So where do these messages come from? Where do they go? These are the things a lot of times we're going to be routing together with enterprise integration. Cues and topics, well, like we just said. 
file system. Maybe we read from a file system put on a queue. That would be common if we're integrating with the mainframe, that mainframes like to talk in flat files. You know, they like to read a file, do some computations, then write a file with the results. So if we're going from maybe a legacy system or a mainframe system to an online system, we might pick up from a file, put into a queue, and then the next system downstream picks up, picks up from the queue. Web services. And these things I have in, on sources and destinations, these can be on either side. They can be the source or the destination. So we could pick up from a web service, maybe get it in XML format, translate it to uh, JSON format, and publish it somewhere else. Email. This is the one I'm excited about. Remember our add a plant module, or maybe upload a photo. If we're allowing the general public to do things like add a plant or upload a photo, maybe we want to send an email confirmation both to the person who did the upload and also to a moderator who can check and make sure that the uploaded content fits our terms of use. Database, many others like this. So enterprise integration is combining all of these things from different pieces of software. It's a very powerful tool. So uh, not sure how many videos we're going to make out of this, but we're going to start our next video with a simple example of setting up, uh, setting up Apache Camel. And we're going to do a very simple example, which is read from one queue, write to another queue. After that, we're going to expand that example to say, OK, read from the queue and write to an email. And what that's going to be is when somebody adds a plant to our database, uh, the add a plant module will, will write this to a queue. Um, Camel will pick it up and then Camel will generate an email based on that action. So lots of fun. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.